Welcome to Calabra, home to Flamengo Beach, voted year after year one of the most beautiful in the world. But what if we were to tell you Flamengo Beach isn't even the most beautiful beach on this island? Well, in this video, we'll let you decide that for yourself as we take you to Flamengo Beach, plus two other lesser known, but truly breathtaking Calabra beaches. Along the way, we'll show you how to get to Calabra from mainland Puerto Rico, how to get around the island, and of course, where to grab some delicious food and drinks. Now let's get this day started. This stuff is our lifesaver today. After a quick 5 a.m. cup of coffee, we were on the road to Ceiba, and after about a 30-minute drive from our Luquillo Airbnb, we arrived at the ferry terminal and got our tickets for 7.30. So glad we got tickets. While we were excited to board our ferry and get to Calabra, the process did not go too smoothly, and we'll tell you more about that later in the video. But for now, let's go explore Calabra. Our first mission in Calabra was to secure transportation, which we didn't book ahead of time as we weren't certain we'd be able to get tickets on the ferry. Fortunately, we had no trouble finding just what we were looking for. Here's our ride for the day. And within a few minutes, we were on the road in our shiny golf cart on our second mission of the day to find some good Puerto Rican coffee. And that search for coffee led us just a couple of blocks south to Black Flamingo, which we found to be an especially popular spot on this Friday morning. And after a few minutes browsing the menu, we decided on our order and made our way outside to relax while our coffee and breakfast was being prepared. Yeah, breakfast and coffee still coming. We got yogurt, granola, and fresh fruit. This is what we've been waiting for. What we need. Yes, we need it. It's strong, which is great. With food in our bellies and coffee in hand, we made our way back to our golf cart. We just got done getting our coffee and it is good and strong, but we will say they are running on island time, but we are okay with that because we're here all day. Yeah, and we do have five beaches on our list today. I'm not sure how many we'll actually make it to, but we did decide we're gonna start off at the beach that's the hardest to get to while we have this coffee energy. Our first beach stop of the day would take us around two miles to the north by golf cart and another half mile to the north on foot. The drive to the beach trailhead was beautiful, but also quite the adventure, as the roads were steep and a bit bumpy. But after around a 10 minute drive, we arrived at the Playa Rosaca trailhead. So the instructions that we found online say to start this hike on the smaller of the two trails next to the turtle nesting sign and the big rock. So I think we're heading that way. The beginning portion of the trail was quite easy and well-defined, and we had no doubt that we were on the right path. But before long, the trail became covered in boulders and the difficulty level picked up considerably. Boulders are getting bigger. So we just met another hiker on the trail and since there was only one vehicle at the trailhead other than us, I think that means we're gonna have this beach all to ourselves. And the waves are getting loud, which means we're close. So we'll see you there soon. This feels like longer than a half mile. <laughs> So the trail isn't going down anymore, which means we're probably at sea level and probably really close to the beach. So we did get to an area where we weren't really sure where to go, but we're gonna go by the stuff hanging on the trees and hopefully that it gets to the beach. That it will. Watch out, there's some giant holes here. Whoa, what lives in those? I don't wanna know. Turtles, probably. Let's go with turtles. Oh yeah, you know what that means. Yes! Do you see this? Let's get down there. At this point, we realized that the half mile hike was totally worth it, as we'd have this amazing beach entirely to ourselves. 
Before our visit to Calabria, we had seen countless photos of its world-renowned beaches. But even so, we were blown away by the stunning beauty of the seemingly untouched Playa Rosaca. What do you think? Would you hike down a boulder-covered trail to visit Playa Rosaca? Let us know in the comments. Visitors to Playa Rosaca will often find themselves alone on this beach, as the challenging hike makes it one of the most isolated beaches on the island. But while unknown to many, the beach is well known to local surfers, as Playa Rosaca offers some of the biggest waves on Calabria. Due to the large waves and undertow, this beach is not recommended for swimming. And while this beach may not be the most popular with tourists, it's extremely popular with turtles and is one of the most active turtle nesting sites on the island. If you're enjoying this video so far and would like to join us as we explore many more amazing beaches in Florida, the Caribbean, and beyond, make sure to subscribe to our channel and turn the notifications on. While this beach was truly stunning, shade was non-existent, and I was ready to find some cover from the sun. But the same couldn't be said for Skylar. Oh, he just couldn't quite leave yet. Look at how happy he is. I know Skylar doesn't want to leave this beach. So after waiting an hour and a half for our ferry, getting seasick on the ferry, barely making it to this trailhead on our golf cart, and then hiking over a half hour to get to this beach, we can say with 100% certainty that it was worth it. This is one of the most beautiful beaches we have ever seen. The only bad news is we spent so much time here, there's no way we're gonna make it to four more beaches today, but hopefully we'll still make it to two or three. Happy to be back in the Boulder Forest and out of the bright sun, we began making our way back up the half mile path to the trailhead. So while we finish the rest of this hike back to our golf cart, we do want to share a little bit about our experience with the ferry to Calabria. So during our trip, non-residents were not able to book tickets in advance. So that meant we had to show up at the ferry terminal this morning and hope that we could get on a ferry. Now from prior research, we did know that their website was often off on the amount of tickets that were available. So even though this morning it said there were no tickets available for the six o'clock ferry, we decided to show up early and try to get on that six o'clock ferry. And we would have made that 6 a.m. ferry if it weren't for the parking situation because there were tickets available, but we didn't know that you had to park off-site and then wait for a shuttle to bring you to the ferry. But thankfully, there were tickets available on the 7.30 ferry, so we were able to get on that one. But I'm gonna let Skylar tell you a little bit more about that experience. So one thing we really hadn't thought about was how much movement there'd be on that ferry. So since we missed the six o'clock ferry that was passengers only, we had to take the 7.30 30 ferry which held passengers and cargo and from talking to some of the other passengers on the ferry it sounds like the passenger and cargo ferry rides a little bit rougher than the passenger only one apparently the seas were pretty rough today because that ferry was rocking and by the time we got to Calabria we were feeling pretty sick there were definitely some people throwing up on that ferry as well thankfully we weren't two of them we are feeling better now so let's go enjoy the rest of this day while some do rate this hike as challenging it was nothing compared to the hike we'll be taking you on in our next episode. Make sure you're subscribed to our channel so you won't miss it. So some of you are probably going to ask if we would recommend taking a golf cart to this trailhead. And while our golf cart did make it, I would point out that the only other vehicles in the parking lot when we got back are four-wheel drive SUVs. So I'll let you make your own decision on that one. After a quick water break, we were on our way to beach number two, which was a four-mile drive away. These hills going downhill, they make me so nervous. I'm so thankful that Skylar is willing to drive. Thank goodness Skylar is not nervous no. on this stuff. I have 100% confidence in this golf cart. Oh boy. Thankfully, the golf cart's brakes did not let us down as we made our way safely down the mountain and back to sea level. We enjoyed a few minutes of driving along the coast and taking in the Caribbean views before heading back up into the hills where we found the roads to be a bit rough. But thankfully, nothing our trusty golf cart couldn't handle. So I wouldn't let Skylar drive through this without testing it. The whole way! An inch. 
Are down that way. Are you no. Go down even further. Further to the right. Okay. As Skylar promised, our golf cart had no issues making it through the water, but I'm still glad I had him check the depth. We made it to the Playa Brava Trailhead, which is the second beach of the day and also the second trail of the day. And thankfully this hike is supposed to be quite a bit easier than the first one. And each beach we go to after this one should be even easier to access yet. And that's great because we're only running on about four hours of sleep and coffee can only get you so far. We found the Playa Brava Trailhead to be wide, flat, and quite easy to navigate. So far, I'd say this trail is way easier right. than the first one. Yeah, it's about 10 times as wide and about a tenth as many boulders. So as you might expect, $10 water shoes like the ones we're wearing today are probably not the best footwear for these hikes, but they are really nice when you finally make it to the beach. It is hot. This trail is significantly hotter than the first one. So far, I actually like the first one better. We like climbing on rocks and it was way more shady. Yeah. I think I can hear the water now. Oh, I can see the water. Oh wow, this is a really wide beach. Yeah. That is gorgeous. After a relatively easy but very hot hike, we were excited to make our way to the water to relax and cool down. It's really nice. It's really nice. Just like Playa Resaca, we found Playa Brava to offer breathtaking natural beauty and a secluded island feel. But one thing we found on Playa Brava that wasn't on Playa Resaca was a section of the beach that was covered in boulders, and we just had to check out the view from on top of the rocks. Time to get in the water? Like Playa Resaca, Playa Brava is known for having some big waves and strong currents but Skylar was still able to find a shallow pool to relax and cool down in, while I was content relaxing on the beautiful beach. That is the biggest coconut I've ever seen. <laughs> it's even bigger than your head. I got a big head too. You do. <laughs> <laughs> After saying goodbye to yet another ridiculously gorgeous beach, we began our mile long hike back up the trail. I'm so appreciating the shade and the breeze. We made it back to the parking area and once again, it's just our little golf cart and a four wheel drive vehicle. So we've been wanting to visit Culebra for several years now. And after these first two beaches, it's even exceeded our expectations. But we still have two more beaches that we wanna to go to. But first, we have to get our golf cart up a giant hill. So wish us luck. While he didn't want to admit it, even Skylar was a bit nervous about this one. You can do it, buddy. Come on, buddy. Woo! Yes! With our last major obstacle cleared, we enjoyed our scenic golf cart ride back into town. Once back in town, we made a quick stop by a local bar where Skylar enjoyed a cold, refreshing bottle of water and I enjoyed a delicious painkiller. Our next stop was the gas station where we filled up our trusty golf cart before returning to the rental shop. Once back at the rental shop, we hopped in the courtesy shuttle van, which took us to our third Calabria beach stop of the day. Now we've made it to our third beach of the day, which is- Rooster, be quiet. We're trying to film a talking part here. There's a car coming now, so get off the road. 
Now we've made it to our third beach of the day, which is Flamenco Beach. This beach is consistently rated among the top beaches in the world. Now we have a hard time believing that this is gonna beat the first two beaches that we went to today, but we're gonna find out soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was nice of them to wait till you're done this time. Well, this is much easier access than the first two beaches. <laughs> It sure didn't take us long to see why Flamenco Beach is rated as one of the very best beaches in the world year after year. As the setting sun wasn't as bright as it had been earlier in the day, the water at Flamenco Beach wasn't quite as blue as our prior beach stops. But the waters here were calmer, the breeze felt amazing, and the sand was powdery soft. All right guys, so we were originally planning on taking you to two more beaches after this one. But once we got out to this beach and saw how beautiful it was, and also thought about how active our day is gonna be tomorrow, we decided that we'd rather just spend some more time relaxing on this beach and enjoying a few beers. So that's what we're gonna do. And you'll have a hard time finding a better place to relax and enjoy a few cold medallias than on Flamenco Beach. What's been your favorite Calabra beach stop? Was it Playa Resaca, Playa Brava, or the famous Flamenco Beach? Let us know in the comments. With the sun setting and our ferry departure time approaching, it was time to say goodbye to the beach and find some food. Thankfully, a van taxi was waiting for us at the beach entrance, and we were off to our dinner destination. Our dinner plans took us to La Cocina del Navigante, a local seafood spot with some great waterfront views. We arrived just as the sun was setting and grabbed a table with some nice views of the bay. We were quick to place our orders as we were both incredibly hungry from our day of exploring on the wonderful island. First up was Skylar's local beer from Ocean Lab, followed by our chicken pasta and mahi and garbanzo beans entrees. The side of tostones were crispy and came with a great dipping sauce while the mahi and garbanzo dish was full of flavor. But to our surprise, our favorite dish was the pasta, which came covered in a creamy and delightful white sauce. After an excellent dinner, we made the short walk back to the terminal where our ferry was sailing in. So this is ours, and look at that. We boarded the ferry to Ceiba, hoping for a much better experience than our ride to Calabria. And to our relief, the ferry back to Ceiba was roomy and much less rocky, and even had an outdoor area to enjoy the ocean breeze. Well, I think it's safe to say I have fully embraced the mud. There's a sign that says, end of trail. Oh, thank God. We hope you can join us next week for even more Puerto Rico adventures. That episode, plus the first three episodes of this series, will be available in our Puerto Rico playlist and by clicking here right now. Thanks for watching.